Good morning, everyone, and you're welcome to this um, wonderful section today morning. Welcome to Personal Development Plan 2022. Hello. Can someone hear me? Yes, I'm getting you. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll probably just um, have a few moments. We'll start right away. And we'll probably call on Mr. Eric to help us help pray for us. Let's have a, a quick prayer, then we can have a start of the section. We thank you very much. All right, we are praying. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We give you glory and honor. What an awesome privilege you have granted unto us this very day. Giving us the grace to be counted among the living law. This very moment, we say we thank you, we give you glory and honor. This is another privilege for us to increase further in knowledge. Thank you for this privilege you have given to us. Thank you for your son, oh God, that you have decided to use to be the vessel that will God minister to us this morning. Faithful God, I pray for divine wisdom. I pray for the grace to be able to convey the information you have given to him unto us this very moment, O oh Lord. I pray, faithful God, that you are going to open our understanding, that we'll be able to understand whatever will be taught in place in the name of Jesus. We pray, I pray faith for God, and may you take total control over the atmosphere, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost take charge from the beginning up to the end. Holy Ghost, take over every other voice, every other power is silenced tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be unto your holy name for taking total control, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, sir.
for the wonderful prayer. And once more, welcome all participants on board. You're welcome to Personal Development Plan 2022. So the first thing we are going to start this morning is to look at who we are as, as um, organizational wise. So we'll look at Global Creativity Organization has a vision to build a world that's your peace world or peace world nation where all community have sound education, leadership, and creativity skills, thereby increasing the standard of living and eradicating poverty. So that's the vision of the organization. Our mission. Our mission is to empower people through creative ability, leadership, and vocational training in all spheres of their life thereby making them job creators and not job seekers. Our values. We believe those in our world that has peace world can live in financial freedom. We believe everyone have the ability, capability to produce academic excellence and become educationally sound. We believe everyone can build a spiritual capacity with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and influence the world positively. Those are the values we actually stand for. We have different arms in the organization which every individual can be part of it. We have the San Andrew Mentorship Forum, which is a platform which has a lot of program. We do community work. We train leaders in other arms of the organization. We have other programs like Ex Executive Leadership Training Center, which we train people that are inside the organization and even those out of the organization. We have Peace Health Innovators who are specialized in the health section. We have Universal Bay ITC Study Association that's Ubiza or Ubosa, which is mainly dominated by Peace Academy Series now. We have excellent preparatory classes. It's for those who want to write competitive examination to different professional schools in Cameroon and even out of Cameroon. We have Christ the Peace Campus Fellowship. Uh, it's not a church, it's a platform that actually helps to enhance your spiritual capacity. We have GCO Graduate Network. This is actually a platform which enable those who have graduated from school and are seeking for a job or skills to better improve themselves and get the skills and job as fast as they can. We have Excellent Leaders Front History, which is a platform which actually helps to build up young people out of the field of technology, but who are passionate with technology. So I think um, those are the basic ones for now. Um, in the course of time, you might get to know more. Um, everybody in Peace World has a responsibility or has a platform you can function in. So there is no area where someone will say that, oh, I want to join this platform, but I don't know where I can function. We have all the sections made available for whatever you want to become or what you're passionate for. So that is that for that. Um, we'll move directly to, move directly to the section, which is all the program for today, like we were saying to you. Okay. 
Okay. Um, if you're not seeing my screen well, please, I'm not getting anything. If you're not getting anything, then click on the Wi-Fi. Click on the Wi-Fi or cellular data. Oh, I think I'm seeing it's three one C. Just a moment, let me try to solve this problem. Okay. Um, we'll start right away. So Global Creativity Organization Personal Development Plan 2022, which is the reason why we're here today, presented by um, Andropo Ajebua, um, actually the founder and president of Global Creativity Organization. So today we're going to look at this outline. First, get to think about it, what you talk about planning what comes at the back part of your mind. That's the first thing we need to look at. When you think about planning, what is the first thing that comes to the back part of your mind? Uh, you see, it has to do a lot. It has to do with you. It has to do with who you want to become. It has everything involved with your future. I get to think about this one day without planning in my life, how will my life look like? You see, planning is that only opportunity that helps you to add value to you. It is what predicts where you're going to be tomorrow. So this morning, we are going to be looking at how to do a personal development plan how you can develop yourself. You see, you get to reach that point in your life where you discover that nobody might be want to be close to you. And the question you might have to ask yourself, or let me see, you have a particular area in your life, which when it comes there or in a society where if we dive in that area, you get to talk about nothing. And you might be tempted to see some people were gifted in a particular area. You might be possibly be thinking that is the way you were created. It's not like that. Now, one thing you need to keep at the back part of your mind is you determine who you want to become. I said one time that failures work on assumption. The day you tell yourself um, other people are gifted, why is my life like this? You're working on assumption. So you are on your highway to your own failure. But successful people, they work on assessment. What is planning? It is assessing you. I want to become the better version of you. So this morning, we're going to be looking at personal development plan how to improve yourself, how to become the better version of yourself. So we're gonna follow this outline very fast. First, we're gonna have introduction. We're going to have what is a personal development plan. Next, we're gonna be looking at what is a SWOT analysis, how to carry out a SWOT analysis. How do I write a personal development plan? What happened once I have completed my personal development plan? If you can take down notes, you can take down. Um, these are some of the things that help to transform me and are still transforming me, which is planning. Let's look at an introduction. To achieve success and happiness in your education, business, career, and personal life, 
or whatever area of your life, you should continuously improve your knowledge, skill, and experience. So what type of life do you want to live? Do you want to be that type of person that is always happy when you get to think about yourself? I know a couple of friends who are always happy when they think about other people. I'm happy for that lady because she have this. Uh, I'm happy for that guy because he have this. I'm happy for that family because they have this. But do you know one thing? For them to be where they are today, or for that your friend to be where he is today, or for you, your father to where he is today, he had to plan. The issue is that everybody plan. If you don't plan, you are planning to fail. But for you to live whatever life you want to live in your education, your business, your personal career, or your personal life, your personal life has to do a lot of things. Your spiritual growth, or the, the habit you want to cut off, the things you want to improve, there are three things you must look upon. The first thing is you have to improve your knowledge. Even the Bible says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. When the issue is, I got to realize one thing. Don't be that type of person which uh, the only thing that gets increased in your life is your age. Knowledge gets to depreciate, value depreciate, skills depreciate, experience depreciate. It therefore means the only thing you know are the things you knew some years behind. So you have to monitor the growth of knowledge over your life. Is it knowledge in school? Is it actually uh, knowledge in your spiritual life? Is it knowledge with your friends? Is it knowledge in a relationship, you have to improve on all those areas. You see, if you don't improve in them, one thing is going to happen is you will not be able to manage. I get to realize one thing. You see, or you might be a young person or we are young people. Creating friends or having friends or the number of friends you have is not a problem. I got to tell myself this thing sometime. I said, St. Andrew, friends are not your problem because you have friends. But there is one thing that is very dangerous in your life at this time is how to manage friends. Because I got contacts in my phone for close to about 2,000 contacts. And I, out of the year, maybe I will not call a particular contact or I will not text a particular contact for the entire year. So my problem it's not network because I created network with these people, but how to manage it now becomes a problem. So we need to look at improving your knowledge, your skills. You see, are you a young person that have graduated? You see, uh, or let me see, riches is the absence of skills. You see, education, does not have a direct relationship with money or with resources. Skills has a direct relationship with money or resources. The skills you want to learn in this new year, what are they? What are the things that you do that is out of education? I get to see people whom all they know in their lives what they're studying in school. And I get to ask myself, how come you want to be successful in this challenging, competitive world? So you have to increase skills, improve yourself. Think about something new you're going to be learning for this year that's going to bring resources to you. Or if money is not your problem, just learn them for learning sake. We don't know where these things are going to help you in the nearest future. The next thing is experience. You need to improve your experience at every stage and at every level of your life, in every sector of your life. What are the things you're studying in school? How does it relate to the real life experience? What are the experiences you have already? How can you improve in them? 
Those are the things we're looking at. So in that entire journey, we're going to be looking at your knowledge, your skills, and your experience. This is known as personal development, which is a continuous lifelong process. You need to know that personal development is not a one day thing. It's a lifelong journey. There are many times I usually say that, St. Andrew, you need to change in some areas. You see, if you have friends and everybody gets to tell you, or the friend gets to tell you, you are the best friend, you are good at this, you are, all they tell you is good, good, good. My friend, that's not a friend for you. Why? Because uh, criticisms are the best arm of growth. Get, you need to um, let your friends tell you what is that attitude in you that needs to be improved upon. Because this man said the praises of men are like chewing gum. If you chew them and swallow them, they will wrap your intestines. So the comment or the praises are supposed to be for you to use and check yourself and become the better version of yourself. Personal development is not something we can live without. A simple and effective way of keeping track of your personal development is by completing a personal development plan. See, uh, one thing you need to look into is, don't allow the world give you the fake of you. If you don't have a plan, it will make it difficult for you to be focused. That's one thing plan helped me. I get to do a lot of things. And most of the time, I get to be so successful in these things. Why? Because I have a plan for all. I know I'm going to school because I want to target this. I'm doing business because I have maybe a financial target at the end of the year. And each section of a business have a particular target financially. So when the year comes to an end, I get to think about my bank account. How much does this sector bring to me? How much does this one bring to me? These are the way I have to think. So, and you are unlikely to meet your goals, whether this may be, or whatever this may be. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. That's a reality. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Get to think about this. A woman who is a farmer, she got to the farm, took her daughters and son, declared a whole farm, and it was May season. She planned going to that farm to plant meat. And out of the sudden, she didn't went to the farm. And she went there after three months. Will that farm still be the same way she kept it? No. Grass or wheat must have grown on it. Why? Because she failed to plan what she meant to plan in that place. So if you don't plan, life will plan for you. And the planning of life for you is failure. We'll look at the next thing. What is a personal development plan? A personal development plan, which is also known as PGP, is an action plan. What is an action plan? It's a G2 plan. You don't want to plan scatter. You want to put every G2 in place. That you can use to identify how does a personal development plan help you. It helps you to identify some key areas in your life. It helps you to identify your individual goals and what you want to achieve. What do you want to achieve in 2020? What are the things you want to achieve? Now, if you don't uh, have anything to achieve at the end of this meeting or this conference, you're going to have one. You see, it helps you strengthen. It helps you identify your strengths and your weaknesses. You know, there are people, when you get to tell them about your weaknesses, they get hurt. You see, that's not the best. If somebody tells you about your weaknesses, be happy about that one. If they tell you about your strength, be happy about that. Because that person is a unique identifier for your success. I usually say that if you are not irritated, you will not rotate, which means that when somebody tells you something negative about you, it will irritate you, but it will help you to rotate to the positive area. This 
uh, the areas you need to improve and develop to meet your goals. So your personal development plan help you identify the area you need to improve and develop your goals. What you need to do to achieve your goals, anything that could hinder your progress, those are the things that your personal development plan will help you identify. It will make you to be that unique you. It will make you to be that asset in this generation. It will make you to understand that this world will be incomplete without you. A personal development form, uh, form is a form, it is actually a form of self evaluation and self reflection. So it's all about you. So you want to self evaluate you. You need to be genuine when you are self evaluating you. You need to be honest. You need to be polite with yourself. See, nobody knows you that you know yourself. And for you to improve, you must reflect. So you need to do a self-reflection. What has been your achievement? What do you want to achieve more? What has been that attitude that has hindered you? How can you improve it? What is your motivation? How can you get it? Um, a short form of personal development plan is a continuous personal development plan. Like I said, a personal development plan is a continuous process. It's a combination of approaches, ideas, and techniques that will help you manage your own learning and growth for the best. You discover that this is all about you. Benefits of a personal development plan. Why do we do a personal development plan? It provides you with clear goals. There are people who have in 2020 or the 2021 or in 2022 that is coming. You know, the only thing that changes on people New Year, I got to think about this, why I was preparing myself for this meeting. And I realized that the only thing that get improved or change in people New Year, most people New Year, because they don't plan for it, is just a change in date and a change in age. Don't be like that. See, be, be a man or a woman of value. You can carry value so much so that the people around you are contaminated with value. It's possible. I get to think about this, and I'll take a very simple example. Jesus in the Bible, his 12 disciples were so contaminated about his value. When he met with these guys, and after meeting with them, when they get to talk, People get to understand that these people have been with somebody unique. Be that man or that woman of value. 2022 should be a year of value in your life. It should be a year of greater achievement. So benefit of a personal development plan, it provides you with clear goals. You ask somebody, what is your goal for 2022? You will say, I want to be better than in 2020. That's not a goal. That's a mere desire, which will never be achieved. It helps you to identify your strengths and weaknesses. It improves your employability. Are you that graduate that is looking for a job? I tell people, whatever I want to get it. It's not because I'm so unique or because I know a lot of people. That's not it. That might just be a tip of it. You see, I have made up my mind to be a man of value. Uh, I've turned down close to about four jobs in a very short period of time. Why I was going to school, I turned down a lot of jobs. Why? Because I knew in the process of going to school, I need to improve on my employability abilities. I need to get the values which these companies are looking for. I worked with Google for, for, I think I started working in 2019 and many people that I was a student and while working with them and people that already graduated, they asked me, how do you go to this level? Um, for those that really want to know the process, I will tell them the process. But for those that just simply want the product, I will tell them it's God and it's simple like that. 
So be a man of the process. Don't be a man of the product. Because those who actually focus on the process always produce a product. But those who focus on the product, the day the product got finished, they will have nothing because they don't know the process. Add value. It will improve your performance. You will be able to do the things you do better than you were doing before. So you need to, you need to take this into consideration. It will increase your motivation. What are the things that motivate you? Are you that lady or that guy that when you get to think about yourself, you're motivated? When you think about yourself, you're motivated. Be that type of person. See, when you add value to yourself, when you produce best academically, when, when business is moving well, when spiritual growth is moving well, when you sleep on your bed, you think about yourself as that lady or as that guy. You'll be so, so happy. You'll be so motivated. You want to do more. Test these things. You want to be more than you. It's the best life you can ever live. It's more than having money. It's more than having asset. The best gift God ever gave you is you. It will help you track your progress. It will improve your sense of purpose. Why you're living. Who you are. Who do you want to become? You enhance your mental well-being and reduce stress. Are the things not good? Get to think about it. You think about yourself, you're motivated, you're happy. There will be no more stress. You're, you will not have headache all the time. You know, I have young people who the time they need to take and build up yourself is the time they use for regret. Why am I alive? Why is my life like this? Why are my own things like this? Everything about them is why. Because they focus on the product and not the process. So in 2022, you're going to focus on the process. You're going to write down goals. You're going to work to achieve those goals. It gives you the best possible chance for success and, and maximize your potential. See, success can become your lifestyle. If you don't know, let me let you know, there are unique potentials in you that nobody else has. Inside you is a great treasure. It's a gold mine. God didn't create a failure. That's the reality. So tap those things out in 2022. Let's, let's use 2022 to be like our 10 years. The things we have done for 10 years behind, let's do them in 2022. We can do it. It's possible. Using a SWOT analysis. Using a SWOT analysis. So, Lendis, you know, I get to realize that many successful businesses are using SWOT analysis. And I get to think about this. What will happen for a young man or a young lady or anybody? at any age in life that you get to do it. If a business made up of a lot of people with divided attention will use SWOT analysis and produce progress in business, success, more interest, what will happen to an individual with a single focus when they do SWOT analysis for their life? Get to think about these things. I want you to be so, so successful in 2022. Where at the end of the year, you see, you can, you can look at January and say, oh, this was so successful. In the process of achieving success, there are always going to be challenges. But you should always know that challenges are bread for you to eat and grow. If the challenges doesn't come, expect them. You're going to have difficult times, but one thing is certain is that you're going to overcome them. So you need to have a mindset of a winner. You can use a SWOT analysis as a starting point to help you create your personal development plan. SWOT stands for strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So you're in your life, 
you have strength, those are things positively, weaknesses negatively, opportunities, things that you can use your strength to do, threat, things that can hinder your growth. When you are con when you are conducting your SWOT analysis, you should look at your current situation. Where are you in 2021? In some few hours, you've been navigating to 2022. Where are you going to be? Your current situation and ask yourself various questions relating to these four areas. Some example questions are, these are questions you should ask yourself. Now you might be asking yourself, well, we're navigating through a process. My, my, my aim for this program is that by the end of it, you should be able to have a personal development plan. Now you might have an academic plan or an academic goal, a business goal, a life goal, a career goal. In all these goals, you must assess them individually. What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? What are the opportunities in that goal? I get to understand that many people go to school just because they see their friends going to school. Uh, I met a lady one time and I was like, why are you doing biochemistry? It's like, I just graduated from UB and they said the best thing I could do was to do biochemistry because uh, I could not make it into medicine. Then I asked her a question, after biochemistry, what will happen? What is your plan after TV? She had no plans, just going to school, following orders. You see, it is imitation that brings, it is imitation that brings limitation. So in every area, you must have a focus. What would this my degree do to me at the end of it? Because if you don't have a focus, you can't plan ahead of time. So when we talk about the strengths in SWOT analysis, what are your goals? What, what are you good at or rather? What advantage do you have over others? So those are your strengths. Do you have any resources available to you that others do not have? Take for example, I want to start a business and I need to do a SWOT analysis. These are questions, what, do I, what am I good at? Maybe um, I'm, I'm starting something like, uh, let me say printing press. First thing, am I good at graphic designing? What advantage do I have order, order, over others? Do I have enough money for the place? Do I have strategy to who customers? Just an example, a lot of other things you can think about. Do you have any resources available to you that others do not? Those are your strengths. What do others say about your strength? Very important. I get to see most Christians who say that it doesn't matter what people say about me. What matters is what God say about you. I, I agree with you. If 10 people, 10 mad people say the same thing about you, there's a problem with you. So you have that mindset, don't, I don't worry what people say about me. <laughs> you see, let me tell you one thing. Uh, be best of you. The only way to be best of you is that you get to assess all what is around you. Do you have any achievement you are proud of? Get to think about yourself. What have you achieved this year? What have, you, what have been your achievement? What do you achieve from January, December? You know, if the only testimony you have in your mouth is, I'm alive. There are many people that are alive too, you know? So you get to think about what are the valuable things you have achieved? Now, the next thing we look at weaknesses. What skills do you struggle with? What are the things you struggle with you don't know? Those are your weaknesses. What areas do you need to improve upon? What holds you back? There are a lot of people that have a lot of things. Who, I, I usually tell myself, St. Andrew, 
these are the things that holds you back. You must develop strategy to go ahead. What holds you back is a limitation to your future. Do you have any bad habits? So you must list those things down in coming down with your personal development plan. List them down. Because if you don't list them down, you can't develop strategy to overcome them. I've got a lot of friends who develop, uh, maybe they say their plans for 2022 or for a new year. And before the 15th of January, they have break all those things. See this habit, I will not do this again, I will not do this again. I'll tell you the reason why those things happen. You were doing a, you were doing a desire. You were witching, you could not. But things that are well planned, strategies are being put down, and you have assessment procedure to check, you will not easily break them that way. Do you avoid certain tasks due to lack of confidence? There are many people that, instead of learning something that you don't know, you prefer to avoid them. In 10 years, you'll be the same person that you were before. Because value is not improving, skill is not improving, knowledge is not improving, experience is not improving. What do others say about your weaknesses? There are people that will praise you for your weaknesses. So don't worry, you. Eh? everything is okay, and you're happy with them. Those are destroyers to your future. The next thing is opportunities. We're talking about SWOT analysis. Opportunities. Is the industry you are in or looking at in a position, in a uh, promising position? So uh, I'm a graduate and I'm going to graduate in three years. What industry do I want to work at? I want to work in, or rather. Or what are the type of places I want to work? Is there a position, is there a promising position there? Many young people, once you're going to school, think about after your graduation, make connections with these companies, improve your network. This great man said, your network will determine your net worth. Don't find yourself in the street. Uh, if you graduate, if you go to school without planning for graduation, you graduate finding yourself on the street. The most dangerous life is a street life. In a street life, we don't know the person that have a degree. We don't know the person that is best. Everybody is on the street. Because you, you get to think about it. You want to go and buy something in the store. You are a university student. I just saw a lady or a guy that's selling. And you get to talk to that one anyhow without even knowing that maybe what I'm studying in school, this one has graduated from that program some years behind. And you might think that you are the only young guy who is going to school, this one school, they are both dropper from class seven. So you discover that the, the strict life doesn't give you adequate knowledge to evaluate people. The worst place you'll be is in the street because you didn't plan for graduation or after graduation. So make the connections with the company. When I get to meet people, the first thing I get to think about is improving my network. It's your contact. It doesn't matter what you think. You know, as a guy, you always have problem with talking with young ladies regarding this. And as a lady, you might have equally a uh, problem talking with guys regarding this, you get in contact. They may have their own concept at the back part of your mind. But remember, you are that man of value. You are that lady of value. You need those contacts. Do what you can to have it. This great man said, Anything you're looking for is four persons away from you. The job after graduation is just four persons away from you. Statistics has proven that. Without a network, no job. Threat. What could derail your success? Example, competition, finances, changes in technology, and any other obstacle. Those are the threats. You know, there are people who say that they don't have time for competition. And if you get to talk with them, they will tell you, everybody is not the same. <laughs> You're a joker. That's the reality. Why do I say so? Uh, it's because look at the companies around there. When MTN put a promotion for a SIM card, Next or Orange is looking for the next possible scenario 
to go on the market with a better promotion than what the competitor has done. Learn what you don't know, which is a threat to your life. Another thing is finances. Uh, you know, some people say that uh, it's very difficult for a rich man to praise God or to serve God. <laughs> Riches is vanity. It's true. I want to remind you that poverty too is vanity. If you think that money is evil, try poverty. One of the most limitations that may limit you in your growth is finances. You must think of procedure to develop finances. If you are that type of guy or lady which money is not your problem, it's not an issue. We will skip that part for you. But if you're that young guy or that young lady or that man or that guy that you know that money is your issues, I will advise you, 2022, think of what will put money in your pocket, whether you're a student. I talk to my students, if it's at Faculty of Health Science, I tell them one thing, run a business. And I have a couple of them, when I look at Rodrick, I think he's a fifth year or sixth year medical student, I'm proud of him because he do a lot of stuff that try to generate money for him. If he can be in a professional school, go to school six o'clock in the morning and come at times seven and has a business running, what about you? The first thing in financial management is that you must develop an account. Don't have that mindset that account in a bank is made for special people. The proof of financial growth is saving. Saving even 500 francs for a month is good enough for a start. Changes in technology. You know, I said one time, don't allow change to change you without you noticing change. This world is fast changing with technology. If you don't have the skills, you're limited. So in 2022, try to learn something new about technology. There are a lot of other obstacles that they are threat to your life. You better know them. It is, is there a risk of your weakness becoming a threat? Remember, your weaknesses can become a threat if you don't treat them. Are there any external changes beyond your control that could be a threat? Or how to carry out the SWOT analysis? We'll analyze the four areas here with an example. I have a very good attention to details, which allow me to identify things that others don't miss, that other, others miss. That's a strength for an individual. You are able to identify something which others will miss, maybe when notice is given or when a conference is going on like this. It's a plus for you. Weakness, weaknesses. I find it difficult to speak in public, particularly large audience. I will try and avoid it when I can. That's a weakness. You might be a public speaker, but you have weaknesses talking with the, when the audience actually go to 1,000. I was like that before. This is a good example for me. Perhaps that's why it is here. But I got to improve myself. I did not try to avoid it. I learned what others knew that I never knew. Opportunities. There is a networking event next month, which will allow me to gain some new contacts. It will also help me with my communication skills. That is an opportunity to break my weaknesses. Threat. As my rule requires training, my lack of confidence in public speaking could hinder my progress and even threaten my position. It's possible. That's how we analyze the individual areas of our life because we want to be the best. If you, I don't think there is anybody that is planning to fail in life. But anybody that does not develop a plan for his life is actually planning to fail. Um, at this point in time, um, we'll look at a SWOT analysis aim. It aims actually to promote your strength, to reduce your weaknesses, to exploit the opportunities available to you, and to minimize threat to your success. Those are the four things a SWOT analysis aim at for your personal development. How do I write a personal development plan? Um, at this point, I'll have to take a break.
and check whether there are any questions. If there are any, then we'll look at them before we move to, because we're moving to a digital part of the event now, which I think has to do with a lot. Is anyone with any questions so far, please? You have any question? Any question you can use the chat room or you let me know. You can unmute yourself. Are there any question? Anybody has any question, please? Yes, Pelagi, you said, woman, you said, please, you talk of getting what others think about you or your plans. Yes, I did mention that. Any question regarding that? What if the person constantly say bad about you? Okay, that is nice. Um, those what those people say about you, you don't take it to be you, but you take it to be an input into you. It means you sit and assess it. Assessment doesn't mean that you take it you become it. No, you analyze it. So what others say about you should be an input to your assessment, not an output of your life. So you have to think about it. Okay, if you say St. Andrew um, is a bad guy, or you said that in the passing, I might not be very happy with that statement, but in my closet, I've got to ask myself this question. What am I really bad at? She said that, what she said, is it really true? I honestly analyze what people say about me because I best know myself. So uh, it might be a positive aspect, it might be a negative aspect, but what I do is to ask, is not to take it upon me. You know, uh, but if, so people usually say, everybody say I'm bad. That's not the right one we're talking about. We, because if you say, everybody say, I am bad, they gave you an input, but you take it to be your output. But is that what you know about yourself? So you take the input to assess the input. Then you work on the input to produce an output of yourself. So it's just like any computing system, which actually have the input, the process, then the output. So you can't just take an input without passing through a process to go to an output. It's not possible. I don't know whether you get me or answer your question or you still have mix up there. Okay, thank you too, Pelagi. Thank you. Okay, so we'll continue. It seems no other question. Um, okay, I have another one. Um, I have 831 C. Say, good morning. You spoke of learning new skills. I wish to ask that should I concentrate on a particular skill or go for many, if possible? Um, I'll answer that question by saying, I'll define laziness first of all. Laziness. It's not about doing nothing. Laziness is doing many things that lead to nothing. That's laziness. So uh, to learning a skill, it's preferable you pick up 
one skill be good at before you move to the next skill. But it depends on the quantity of things you have on your personal development plan, what you want to achieve. Remember, every plan has a time frame. Now, another thing I want to talk about is multitasking. You might want to be the one that you want to learn two or three skills at a time. If you're good at that, it's good. But I'll give you the principle of multitasking. The basic principle of multitasking is excellent. If you are not excellent at one thing, you cannot be good at many things. I do a lot of stuff. I'm a student, I'm a businessman, I'm a mentor, growing an organization. I look at multiple places as work site. I have a lot I do. One of the things that helped me for me to be good at all of those things is multitasking. But I was first of all a student. I completed my courses, I was a student focused with just one course. I completed the whole of my course in a very short, uh, let me say, with a very excellent grade, putting very little effort. So I, I thought, I spoke to myself, I could use this other time for something else and still give the little time I gave for study and produce more results in the other side. But one thing was possible was that I was good at one thing before moving to the other things. So that is, I think um, that's how we have to look at it here. But for the start, uh, for a skill, you got to start with one first. One I'm good at, you move to the other. But if you want to include more tax in there, you know yourself better. So you can, you can go into that. I don't know if I answer your question. Do I answer the question or still doubt? I don't know your name. I see 81, that's 831C. I don't know why you didn't use your name. Man. Do I answer the question? Okay, we have to move on. Yes, if I didn't answer it, I'll throw more light on it, or maybe somebody on the conference call to actually to believe learning is a two-way process. Okay, how do I write a personal development plan? All personal development plans are different because individuals differ. So you don't expect my personal development plan to be like your own because you have a personal life. You have a personal things you want to achieve. You have goals that differ from my own. So it also depends on the format. You can write it in listing. You can write in tabular form. You can write in different way. We'll be talking about that subsequently in any manner. But they should have all the criteria that a personal development plan should have. See, don't be a replacement of somebody. The things which are going to help you to be the real you is when you put your plans down. The things, the things that give you satisfaction down, the thing you want to achieve down. I believe that anybody can live any type of life you want to live. Be a planner. Even the Bible says that, will a man want to build a house without counting the cost? Planning is the procedure of counting the cost of what you want to do. Here are some general steps on how you can actually uh, achieve a personal development plan. The first thing to the last thing you can do. Step one, complete a SWOT analysis. Take for example, I want to, I want to set an academic goal. And my goal for this semester, this year, or for my whole degree. So I've talked about a short-term goal, which is a semester. I've talked about a year, which is a mid intermediate-term goal. And I spoke about a complete degree program, which is a long-term goal. 
I can say for this same mister, I want my GPA to be 3.9. I need to complete the SWOT analysis for that semester. For all the courses I have, I will need to ask myself some questions, which is kind of, it's just a reflection I'm using. There are different areas. You might have goal for business, goal for your personal life. Anything you want, the only thing that is limiting you from having what you want is you. I usually uh, spoke to the people I mentor and they will come at time and tell me things like, um, say, I, I have this problem. Uh, each time I try to do this, it's not going. I try to do this, it's not going. The more I put effort uh, is the less result I have. And I usually turn and say, is there, uh, some will say, I think that there's a problem somewhere. In my family, I have been the only one that have been struggling, like nobody reached this level. And I will smile and then I look at them. I said, the only wish doctor to your life is you. Most will not be happy, but it's a reality. And when we get to analyze things, they will realize that what I said was the truth. Nobody is limiting you for any life you want to live. It's you. Planning is necessary. I discovered that money uh, is not even what people require. It's planning. Because it's in planning that you follow what money is following. Because you don't follow money, you follow what money is following, and money will follow you. Money is following idea. Idea comes by planning. You can give somebody 10 million today and give somebody 100,000 today. Give a planner 100,000 today and give uh, anybody that doesn't plan 10 million today. Ask them in 10 years time. The 100,000 francs guy will be more richer than the 10 million francs guy. It's a principle, it has been proven. So the first step in doing your personal development plan is complete a SWOT analysis for the thing you want to plan on. You should complete a SWOT analysis as the first step of your personal development plan and as a self-assessment, genuinely assessing that area. That way you can identify what could help you or hinder you in achieving your goal. Which goal do you want to achieve in 2020? As for me, I have set my goals. I am still writing. These three days remaining is a day for indoor planning. Buy a diary, buy it an exercise book. Put these things down. The Bible says, write down your vision that others might see and run with it. The first person to see your vision is you because you are the first person that puts it down. Be the first runner of your own vision. It should be written down. See, be challenged each time you go and read your vision. Don't write Chinese vision. My, uh, my target for this semester is to have a GPA of three. It's good, but it's not for those who want to go on top. One thing with goals is that when you set goals, even if you didn't achieve those goals, you will be in position better than if you didn't set those goals. When you're setting your goal, think big. There are no laws that restrict thinking. Think big. I said one time, if you think in a bottle, you end up in a beer cover. So think global, think big. Nobody's restricting you. It's not the land with a boundary. Evaluate your existing skills, knowledge, and interests. So when you're setting a SWOT and your skills, what skills do you have? Take, for example, I want to achieve a GPA of four. So how much do I know this particular course? What knowledge do I need to improve? What are my interests? Why am I doing uh, this program? Identify if you have any transferable skills that could help you achieve your goals. Remember, every goal you want to achieve needs assistance. Some of the ways you're going to receive assistance is by transferring some skills. 
Okay, am I set for this year? I want to actually win 1,000 souls for God. That might be part of my spiritual goal. But what, what I might have with me is better understanding of Python programming. But there are a whole lot of people out there who don't know Python programming. They are part of my, my goals. I need the souls I need to win. So I go with that, my skill of understanding of Python, teach them. At the end of the day, once they are happy, I can lead them to Christ. That's a transferable skill. Use the result when setting your goals. What result do you have? You have to use them. That's the first step in doing your personal development plan. On whatever. So a personal development plan can have academic, can have spiritual, can have personal life, can have business. But you have to assess their SWOT analysis personally, individually. So you can have goals of different sections. Section one is this goal. Section two is this goal. Section three is this goal. So be having a picture in your mind for your goals in 2022. This is a good example of SWOT analysis. So a SWOT analysis will have strengths here, will have weaknesses here, will have opportunities here, and will have threats the other way. That just depends on you, depending on the type of SWOT analysis you want to. Some we equally put listing, some we put some other format, it's still not an issue. Step two, set your goals. Think about the things you really want to achieve in your education, career, or professional life, or personal life. To meet your overall aim, you should set goals that you can fulfill your objective. Make a list of your goal and ensure that they are smart, which means they should be. Many people set goals that are not smart. So today, you're going to be learning how to set smart goals. S stands for specific. Your goal should be specific and precise rather than generic. So if you just say, I want to work out, you left the house. Your mom was so happy with everything you did in the house and you were going back. Say, my daughter, what will you do for me this year? Say, mom, I work hard in school. It's not a goal. It's just a mere ambition, which will never be achieved. I met a lady one time. She's a graduate now, Celine. When school, the new semester was starting, I was not very pleased with the result for the first semester, one of the student and mentor. And she came to me, I said, what are your goals for the second semester? She said, this semester like this, I'll work hard, I'll work very hard. I turn and smile, look at her, I say, you're very stupid. And she was not very happy. Anyway, but she got to realize why I told her that was a very stupid goal. It was not specific. You should state exactly what you want to achieve or change. Exactly. That's why if I ever ask you, what is your, your target GPA? And you say, say, between three to four. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's not a GPA. An example of a generic and weak goal should will be, I want to be a better public speaker, just like I said. An example of a smart goal will be, I want to attend a training course on presenting to help me improve my public speaking skill as I lack confidence in this area and is holding me back. That's a specific goal. It tells you what the person wants to achieve, what the person will do to achieve the limitation the goal is bringing to the person. A goal should be specific. Measurable. So for SMART, M stands for the goal should be measurable. It should be a measurable goal. So it should be quantitative. So for those of you who said it should be between that, so you understand why I don't usually agree too much with you regarding what you usually tell me. Having a quantifiable goal will make it easy to track and achieve. You must track your goals. What do I mean by that? If I said I need to produce a GPA of four for a semester, and I get to realize that uh, I wrote the first course, and the, I knew 
that if the marker paper my CA will not be up to 20. By having that in my mind, it's already tracking my goal because that CA for a course, I may have up to 10 courses. That CA alone has an effect on the final goal for that semester. So all goals has to be tracked. Take for example, you have a document you need to send to Belgium for an admission in Hesa University. You send that document through DHL. There is a tracking number that the company gives to you so that you should be able to monitor the location of that document at any point in time. You will stop tracking that document once you recognize that that document is in Hesa admission office. That goal has been achieved. So if you don't track, you can achieve. For example, I'll compare three different courses for content and price. So you're comparing three courses for what, what they have inside and the price for each. I will enroll on my choosing course within one month. That's a good measurable goal. The next thing is achievable. People set goals who will never be achieved. Now, I usually talk to my siblings. I said, you can be some of these guys that, that said, I'll be my house on the air and fence it with money. You see, impossible possibilities. So your goal must be achievable. It must be realistic. It must be attainable. Um, I know that there are some goals that will frighten people when you read them, but it's not a problem. It's really goals that are set at the place of prayer. That goes beyond the ordinary. So it doesn't mean that, take for example, I might not have up to 3 million in my account and I said by the end of this year, I need at least 100 million in my account. It would be very stupid to many people because you might look at what I'm doing, but uh, you get the sense behind it. So your goals must be realistic and attainable. Ask yourself, whether you can achieve them in a certain time frame. What bound a goal is time? Brothers and sisters, you don't have time. The most basic raw material given to all individual is time. What you need is not money, it's time. It's time management. You must know that Time is an evenly distributed commodity. If you waste your time, somebody will use his time. And you hear people said, I was in the same class with him. We did the same program with him. But today he's rich and poor. Why is my life like that? Ask yourself this question. What did I do with my time? For example, I have got the funds available to pay for the course. Also, currently working part-time, so I have enough time to study. So that's a good example for achievable goal. You have what it takes to get it, and you have the time to, to give in. Relevant. All your goals must be relevant. That's for uh, ARU. So we say SMART, S for specific, M for measurable, A for achieve, ARU for relevant. Your goals must be relevant. Your goals should relate to your overall aims and long-term ambition. Don't set a goal that is out of your future. You're a biochemist, you're setting a goal to become an accountant. Therefore, means that what you're studying now has nothing to do with where you're going to. For example, a lack of confidence in public speaking is one of my weaknesses, and I feel it is holding me back in my career and personal life. So relevance, we spoke about that. The last thing for T for SMART is time bound. All goals must be time bound. Set realistic time scale to achieve your outcomes. After, uh, ask yourself when you want to achieve your goals. So you must know when you want to achieve. You, you don't want to set a goal that is going to see the day rapture will occur, the day you will die, if you choose. You don't want to do that. You want to set a goal, set a goal that has a time frame. I discovered one thing. 
everything you are doing in this world has a time frame. You have a time frame to be in that university. You have a time frame to be in that job. You have a time frame to be in that house. You have a time frame from everything. You have a time frame of living on earth. So I don't want to waste my time frame. I want to make the maximum impact in the shortest possible time. And what will help me is a personal development plan. Set realistic time scale to achieve your outcome. Ask yourself, when you want to achieve your goals, split your goals into short term, medium term, and long term. I give an example of that ready. For example, I'll complete my course within the next three months. I'll also evaluate whether it has improved my public speaking skill. Each time you achieve your goals, ask yourself, has it improved you? Has it added value to you? Has it made you to become a better person than before? I want to tell you uh, this short, simple illustration. I'm probably getting to the end of this presentation. I want to tell you this. Who has ever off your phone? Your phone has ever been down? Or let's say coincidentally, your phone got bad. And you do not put on your phone for one month. You took it to a repairer. The repairer got to arrange the phone. And you come now, you put your SIM card in your phone, you bought data for 200 francs, that's 200 MB. Immediately you own your data, you will realize one thing. The applications in your phone, they are struggling to update themselves. That's for a mere application. They, what are they doing? They want to get better features than the previous ones. So what are they doing? They are improving themselves. That's one app developed by human. What about you? So you need to improve every bit of your life in 2020. It has to be written down to be certain that you have made up your mind to do it. So my assignment for you today is I go and buy a book. Put these things down. See, tomorrow, once you're celebrated, see, I ask you for this question. Um, a scammer that scam 100 million has no story. You can't, he can't motivate any young person. Why? Because he just got that money out of the sudden. So if a young man gets to that guy or that lady and said, please, sir, can you help me to be like you tomorrow? Perhaps the guy asking might not know that that guy just took somebody money or a company money that was kept somewhere. And he will have nothing to say because he does not have the process he has with the product, which was taken through a crook method. Learn to develop yourself in this area so that you can motivate somebody tomorrow. I'm able to do this presentation for you today because I did this yesterday and it's working for me today. So I got to tell you because I want you to be the best. I want to see you tomorrow be the best version of you. I want to be happy for your success. True success is not all about the achievement. It's all about the number of people you have met successful. And that's the reason why we find ourselves here today. Create your action plan. That's step three. The first thing, do a SWOT analysis. Next thing, set your goals. The next thing, Create your action plan. Once you have, once you, you, once you are clear smart goals, once you have set your clear smart goal, you should break them down into action points. Action point means specific points, which will make them more measurable. You can put these points into action plan with your priority goal at the top. So action plan means specific. There is no requirement for your personal development plan, action plan to be in any particular format. So you can put your own written down step by step. Somebody will use tabular form. 
I pray that by evening, I'll have a couple of samples to present to you. It can be handwritten or typed or tabulated or free flow texting. Whatever format you choose, you should ensure that it is easy for you to produce, follow, and update. That's how you create your PGP, Personal Development Plan. It depends on you. I've given you the points. I'm attending to questions at the end of the list. So if you, if you have any question, any way you don't understand, you can ask once you drop the presentation. Step four, we need to look at detail the strategy and resources for achieving your goals. That's the next step of setting the personal development plan. You now have your list of goals in your action plan, but how will you go ahead achieving them? Now you should write down your strategy and resources you need to achieve your goals. Coincidentally, two individuals might have the same goal, but they will certainly have different strategies and resources to achieve those goals. Academically, one of the best ways to achieve your goals is to know yourself. Know yourself. There are people that will read things once they have it. There are people that will need to read about three times. They know it. There are people that are good in reading the early hours of the day. There are people that are good in reading the late hours of the day. Know yourself. There is nothing like too intelligent guy or too lazy or too dull lady or too dull guy. It doesn't exist. It's an image. When you look at yourself in the mirror, what you see in that mirror is an image. You can't hold that image, but you can hold your real self. Anybody can be who you want to become. If you classify yourself as that doll lady or that doll guy, it's because you have planned yourself that way, or you didn't plan, and life has planned you to be that way. God didn't create a failure. So it can include further training. E.g. enrolling in a course, research, e.g. website, journal, books, hand-on experience, volunt that's voluntary, carrying out voluntary service. Those of you who have graduated, you don't have a job. If you can volunteer somewhere, it's good. Volunteer in a company you want to work at tomorrow or you want to work there tomorrow. Those of you who are going to school, if you have companies, you can volunteer there while going to school, which are dream company you want to work there, do that. Those are the things we are talking about. There are very few people who are going to be doing this in life. Um, this conference was aimed to reach a lot. I believe the bottom is congested, only a few go on top. And these are the procedure for those who want to go on top. You know, we walk along the street, Every day we see big cars, we see good houses, we see people living a lot of luxury life. And hello, I'm in a me. You 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 live in a you live in a type of you see a lot of life those people are living, and you're tempted to say that. Uh, those people, are, 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 some, some say involvement people, uh, they, they have involved themselves somewhere. It's a lie. Some people have voluntarily worked for their future. It's not all. So you can live whatever life you want to live. Taking on a new project or responsibility is included too. Professional advice is from a mentor. Is still another strategy. Guidance and doing supervision is still a procedure. Speaking to people in different rules, we will still learn and develop strategy. When somebody is successful in something, when you clap for that person, clap. But get to find out what the person do. I usually say in churches, I love your testimony, but I love the procedure more that help you to get the testimony. 
Time needed for the strategy to be effective. Give time for each strategy you have put in place. The last step, which is assessing your progress. Assessing your progress. Remember, I said one thing. Failure, work on assumption. Why is successful people, they work on assessment. Be the first assessor over your own goals. I usually say, if somebody come and be telling me things that are nasty about my life, which is true, and I have not noticed, then there's, it has gotten to the worst state. Because the first person to notice that there is a problem is me, because it has to do with me. Finally, you should note in your personal development plan how you will monitor and assess the progress of your goal. Once you said, I want to have A grade in all my courses, I want my business to be multiplied into three different sections. What are the weekly plan, the daily plan you have set to monitor that business? I know a lot of whole provision store. The provision store only fall before they recognize that it has fallen. Because when they wake up in the morning, they see things just display in the store. They just think that the store is still there. There will be no food in the house. And mom will say, go to the store and take the recob rice. Go and take fish. Go and take this one. And see, finally come to nothing. Why? They were not assessing what I input, what is coming out, what is left. For example, you may be... You may be continually assessed throughout a course, and you will use the assessment result as a milestone for achieving your goal. That's the reason why they give us C in school, to assess us on what they are teaching. If school can assess us, what about us assessing our personal life? Um, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being there. Um, I think we'll respect time this morning. Uh, that's what I said for today. We have given you the broad picture. Go and set goals. In the evening, we're going to be looking on, I'm sure it's how to monitor those goals. And the next day, we're going to be looking at your goals they have set. There are some that are personal to you. I know you don't want to share. It's not a problem. But at least a generic one so that we can guide. So at least we'll take somebody's goals or somebody's personal development plan and go through. So that if there are any adjustment in your own, you should be able to uh, put together. I'll beg with you to attend all the section of, uh, of the meeting or the conference, because if you skip, you have a gap knowledge and you might not be able to understand a particular point. Um, I think that is that for this morning. I'll attend to question. Uh, then I think we should be calling it a day. Any questions so far, please? Yes, oh, Pelagi. Please, uh, in the SWOT analysis, we talk of weakness. What if, what if your weakness is your friend? It's as simple like this, cut off the friend. Um, let me tell you something. People get to tell me, I classify friends into TV level. I have first degree friends, I have second degree friends, I have third degree friends. Now, one of the things people usually ask me is, you have a lot of friends. And how do you do? Most of the people, they call uh, a lot of friends I have, they are third degree friends. We don't have enemies, that's the reality of life. We don't have enemy. If anybody said anything to you uh, that hurts you, uh, we don't make enemies. We simply avoid them. So you can still be my friend, but you're very far from me in my mind because everything has to take place in the mind. If I have a friend that a friend will limit me from becoming who I ought to be, I'll cut that one. If the only thing behind me and you should be good money, good money should be fine. Any friend that doesn't add value to your life is as good as cutting the friend, honestly. Let me tell you one thing with friends is 
tomorrow, when you are not who you ought to be, those same friends that are so many in your life will be the first people to leave you. You need to, humans are very, very complex. That's a reality you need to understand. Um, and one of the things you need to realize that if people are connected to your life, it's for reasons. And once those reasons are not there, when you become that nasty lady or that nasty guy, those friends will leave. For example, if I have a friend which I discovered that he or she has changed to a certain level, I will cut off from you because there is this saying that tell me your friends and I will tell you who you are. I will honestly tell you for the sake of the journey ahead, for the better life, I think I should be able to show to you in the nearest future or for the sake of my development, of your development, of our development, this friendship has to be on a hold for now. It's politely like that and I have to move on. It's my life. At the end of the day, who you become. At every stage of your life, you're going to have other friends. You get to think about it. When you were in primary school, you had friends. You thought if those ones leave you, you might die. When you went to secondary school, you had friends. GC was a natural selection, ordinary level. Some stay behind you went ahead. Lower seat, you had new friends. When you go to upper seat, GC was, advanced level was natural selection. You came to the university, some are still repeating. Get to think about this. In the university, you see the same thing. So you might think that um, if somebody is so daring to you but doesn't add value to you, it's to cut the person. It's simple like that. That's what I think. I don't know if I answer your question. Okay, thank you too. Any other question, please? We are running out of time. Any other question? Um, you can unmute your mic. It's a section for questions. So you can unmute your mic and talk if you if you have to. Mm, good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, so, you talked some, uh, so you talked about uh, setting activity goals. So I wish to find out if uh, those goals can be monthly or yearly or weekly. Okay, okay. Yes, it depends on you. You can you can have a very broad. Okay, just take for example. I can say okay. Uh, I want to make sure that before this year end, I have one hundred million in my account. I can divide that to be a weekly. Out of one million, how much should I make per week? And I have enough for a weekly goal to make sure that I monitor that goal well so that I don't arrive December of 2020 without uh, knowing that this goal I set is not coming to achievement. So it depends on you. That's why we divide it into long-term goal, intermediate goal, or medium-term goal, and short-term goal. So it just depends on you. The method and the strategy you think you can best achieve that goal is the best for it. I don't know whether I answer your question. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you too. Um, are there any questions? If there are none, we are going out of time. We want to maintain time. Maybe see you in the evening section today and um, we'll be able to put everything in place. One last question, if anybody has, if not, we will have to end. Okay, okay, okay. I believe we have come to the end of this section today. I'll have to say thank you very much.
for being there. And I uh, hope to see you in the evening section today. If there are questions, put them together. As you go, please try as much as possible to set goals, set, uh, try to create a personal development plan where you have difficulties, bring it in the evening section, and we are probably going to be assisting you in doing that. Thank you so much. And you have a wonderful day.